Tales of the Jedi may have been short in its runtime, but there were still plenty of fun Easter eggs and references to other Star Wars stories to be found in all six episodes, so here's everything I picked out. The first short, Life and Death, might give us our first good look at Shili, the Togruta homeworld. At the Tales of the Jedi panel at Star Wars Celebration 2022, voice actor Janina Gavankar mentioned how great Shili looked, and Dave Filoni replied he never said that it was Shili, so who knows, it could be a Togruta colony. Speaking of Janina, she voices Ahsoka's mother, Pav T. She also played Aiden Versio on the story campaign of Battlefront 2. You can see an 8D droid wandering the Togruta village. They're usually connected with smelting jobs, so maybe it helps with little mining operations on the planet or something like that. The squirrel-like creature might be a Thimiar, a rodent native to Shili mentioned in the novelization of the Clone Wars movie. The creature Pav T hunts is called a Kaibuk. They were first created for the Clone Wars micro-series. When Obi-Wan was a youngling at the Jedi Temple, he was placed into the Kaibuk clan. The large, saber-toothed tiger-like creature could be an Akul. They were described as large, quadrupedal, carnivorous predators with orange fur native to the grasslands of Shili. I would say this Akul's fur is more yellow than orange, but whatever. I think it's close enough. Akul teeth were prized trophies and could be seen used in the headdress of Jedi Master Shock T. We're probably still another year or two away from this moment in the timeline, but Gantika's announcement that Ahsoka is a Jedi will lead to her discovery by the Jedi Order and a visit from Plo Koon, who will take her to the temple for training. In the second short, Justice, Dooku and Qui-Gon take a T-6 shuttle to a planet. That ship was used often by the Jedi Order as an unarmed transport. They were meant to be an older model, so seeing it used long before the Clone Wars makes sense. The ship was first seen in the Clone Wars episode Children of the Force. Ahsoka took one to visit Sabine Wren on Lothal at the end of Star Wars Rebels, and the Mandalorian experience at Star Wars Celebration 2022 suggested we will see it again in live action in the Ahsoka series. The younger Qui-Gon Jinn is voiced by Michael Richardson, Liam Neeson's son, so that's kind of perfect. The farming droid encountered on the desolate planet is the same model as the droid seen on the planet Sorgan in the Mandalorian episode Sanctuary. The dog-like creature might be an Anuba, but it seriously just looks like a dog, which has been described before in the book Phasma as some long-gone creatures with four legs and a floppy tongue. Senator Dagonet has an RA-7 droid as his aid, which would eventually become the primary protocol droid of the Galactic Empire. Dooku's lightsaber color as a Jedi is blue. That was first established in the comic Tales of the Republic. In Choices, Dooku and Mace Windu investigate the death of a Jedi on the planet Raxus Secundus. That world will eventually be the capital for the Confederacy of Independent Systems, which Dooku himself will lead. As we see throughout the episode, the seeds of the Separatist movement have already been planted. Hanel is voiced by Andrew Cascino, who also provided the voice for Saw Gerrera in The Clone Wars and The Bad Batch, and provided several voices for Star Wars Visions. Jedi Master Katri's funeral matches Obi-Wan Kenobi's fake funeral as seen in Season 4 of The Clone Wars in the episode titled Deception. The Sith Lord short takes place at the same time as Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. We finally learn who deleted Kamino from the Jedi Archives as Obi-Wan discovers an attack of the clones. I mean, we all knew it was Dooku, but it was still cool to see. Dooku uses sifo clearance code for the job, who was mentioned as being the Jedi Master who ordered the clone army in the first place. It was revealed in the Clone Wars that Dooku had sifo murdered prior to this short. Qui-Gon Jinn at this age is once again voiced by Liam Neeson. Yaddle is voiced by Bryce Dallas Howard, who has directed three episodes of live-action Star Wars television, specifically two of my favorite episodes, The Heiress and the Mandalorian Season 2, and Return of the Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett. Qui-Gon speaks very highly of Obi-Wan to Dooku, and his old master expresses his wishes to meet the young man someday. This lines up perfectly with their very first conversation in Attack of the Clones. The tree Dooku visits after Qui-Gon's death is a Yuneti tree. That type of tree was sacred to the Jedi as it was mildly Force-sensitive. This specific tree appeared in several episodes of The Clone Wars, and its remains were recovered by Luke Skywalker in an Imperial base shortly after the Battle of Endor. Dooku mentions that Qui-Gon was from Coruscant. That detail was first established in the reference book Ultimate Star Wars. Dooku meets Sidious in the very same building where they meet at the end of Attack of the Clones in the Works District on Coruscant. Palpatine is once again voiced by Ian McDermott, the original actor who played him in Return of the Jedi, the prequels, The Rise of Skywalker, Star Wars Rebels, and more. Sidious tells Dooku that he will always question his loyalty, and Sidious always, always tests his pupils. Darth Vader most of all. So many books and comics have been about the constant tests Sidious has put his apprentice through. 
Obviously, this short answers the question, what happened to Yaddle, which is very different from the version we got in Star Wars Legends. I'll also point out that this episode leaves Dooku's membership in the Jedi Order up for debate. Books have placed him leaving the Order about ten years earlier than this, and I see nothing that firmly contradicts that. I think they left it vague on purpose so that he could seem like he was still in the Order for anyone who hadn't read the books, but those stories make it clear that even though he left the Order, he was still on good terms with everyone, allowed to return to the Jedi Temple, keep his lightsaber, etc., but I'll talk about that more in another video. Moving on to Practice Makes Perfect, several familiar characters can be seen in Ahsoka's training session. Terra Sanube was an old Jedi Master who was often seen training younglings and Padawans. He was most recently seen dead and preserved in the lower levels of the Fortress Inquisitorius in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. And I'll point out that they made his lightsaber look far more blue than white. It was a very pale blue that looked nearly white in the Clone Wars series, but I think they're trying to more firmly distinguish his lightsaber from actual white purified lightsabers like the ones Ahsoka eventually wields. Or maybe his lightsaber just ran low on batteries that episode, I don't know. Caleb Doom was the Padawan of Depa Balaba. He can be seen surviving Order 66 in The Bad Batch. He eventually goes by the name Kanan Jarrus, and he is one of the main characters of Star Wars Rebels. And Obi-Wan Kenobi is given an updated character model that brings back his glorious Attack of the Clone style mullet, although I will say his beard doesn't look wooden enough for my taste. During Ahsoka's training with the clones, she is stunned by Jesse, the clone that would eventually lead the execution of Order 66 against her in the final episode of The Clone Wars. Over the course of her training with the clones, she defends herself using moves that will save her when Order 66 is activated and the clones under her command. The final short, Resolve, recreates Padme's funeral at the end of Revenge of the Sith and reveals that Ahsoka was in attendance. We also see Bail Organa and Mon Mothma there, two of Padme's political allies, and of course Mothma most recently appeared throughout the first season of Andor. We briefly see Ahsoka with Rex and the Y-Wing they both commandeered after the events of the final episodes of The Clone Wars, so they didn't part ways immediately. Much of the episode is similar to the novel Ahsoka by E.K. Johnston, but the names of the characters are all different. I don't necessarily think this is meant to be a retcon, just like an adaptation of the myth of what Ahsoka did until she rejoined the fight. The broad strokes all match well enough. Again, I'll be doing a separate video all about this. Ahsoka's alias, Ashla, is the same name she uses in the novel. It's also another name for the light side of the Force that George Lucas used long ago when he was first developing Star Wars, and it was a name he considered using for Ahsoka in the Clone Wars series. And that's everything I caught in Season 1 of Tales of the Jedi. Let me know what I missed in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.